So uh, uh, welcome everyone. It's great to have you in this fun weekly series that we've been doing here um, around um, not only getting through this, this uh, pandemic, but uh, capitalize on, on it. I'd like the, um, the politicians saying of uh, don't let a good crisis go to waste. And uh, look, our business is no different. The financial industry, uh, uh, at least our business of Ameriprise advisors, other advisors have certainly gained from the uh, uh, uncertainty that goes on when there's uh, market downturns. People need help. It's great for our business in attracting new people and it, and it spawns a lot of growth. So we're gonna talk about today uh, how to capitalize on that growth, uh, some new, very hot off the press updates as we go. So, um, so everyone should just mute your phone. We'll, we'll take uh, everyone off mute at some point to, um, uh, to do some Q&A. But let's get the chat box going. Down at the bottom right, at the very bottom, it says chat. If you click on it, it'll open up. You'll already see some banter starting in there. So let's keep that going. When I'm talking, Trevor's gonna be in there uh, posting, uh, answering questions. When Trevor's talking, I'll be in there doing the same. So, uh, so open that up. Let's get that crank in there. So um, we got a nice uh, attendance on here. This also going to be recorded for those of you who are uh, watching the replay here. Um, for a, a lot of you on here, I'm already working with. For anyone that I'm that that I is I'm not working with, not sure who I am. Trevor is. Um, we'll give you just a quick uh, thirty thousand foot view. I've been with the Ameriprise over twenty years. Been doing coach consulting for over fifteen years. Um, Ameriprise ranks us uh, consultants within the Ameriprise, and uh, we actually have three uh, Dynamic Directions um, uh, coaches that are franchise consultants that all consistently rank at the top. It's really cool. Um, I'm all about helping advisors grow. Um, I've done all these certifications and coaching and designations, and uh, I've sort of ran out of stuff, so I went back to school. I got my master's degree in psychology coaching. I'm currently working on my doctorate degree in performance psychology, which has been extremely relevant to what's going on right now. And I pulled out some really great things that we're gonna to use towards the end here. And uh, with us, we have a very special guest, Trevor Shakiba from down south of Houston. And um, Trevor has been one of the best client acquisition and organic net flows advisors in Ameriprise. Uh, he's a guru in this area. So you can see he grew his practice by more than 10 times in 10 years, purely from organic growth. Basically everything we're gonna talk about today is the formula to grow your practice by 10 times. And um, uh, he sold his practice, gosh, we're right about six months now, um, towards the end of last year. And uh, he was able to do it for a, a, a pretty big multiple and now, He's turned around and he is helping other advisors do all the things that he did. Uh, he's helping other advisors get results like his. So uh, Trevor, welcome and always thanks for being on the webinar here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to see how many people uh, we have on here, John, that are excited about growing. Awesome, we even have Wonder Woman on. This is a big <laughs> deal, everyone. Lots of great names in here. <laughs> So I like what Trevor said earlier, that all his ideas came from other advisors. And look, every idea I've gotten has probably come from another advisor. I did not reinvent uh, uh, the wheel, did not invent anything. So we've got lots of practice around Dynamic Directions, which is awesome. It's a great pool for best practice sharing. Um, it's one of the things that, that we're proudest of is there is so much sharing. So as we go light up the, the chat box, with, if you have ideas, um, or you want to hear what other people are doing, let's, let's go through it there. But we got lots of practices, lots of GDC, lots of uh, assets under management, uh, lots of coaches around. So all these um, uh, ideas kind of come from this group is just what we wanted to highlight there. So our agenda, our roadmap for today, for the next, um, you know, 35 max, uh, maybe 40, uh, 40 minutes here, is really good. We're going to talk about growth. And we're gonna talk about uh, uh, growing, but we're also gonna talk about what needs to happen in the short term here. You know, uh, Q2 is kind of ripped by so far. I mean, May starts on Friday and um, we're marching towards mid-year and we've got a short gaps of excellence 
that we can get uh, uh, on track to exceed this year's goals. We're going to talk about that here. We're going to dive into one of the most popular topics has been the new virtual marketing ideas, what you can do in this uh, weird quarantine uh, environment that we're in and uh, all the action that you can get. And then we're going to take it a step further. We're going to talk about not only specific action items for you to be working on and executing on to get the best results, but we're also going to talk about behavior changes because, folks, that's where the rubber hits the road is changing uh, what you do. It's the hardest thing for human beings to do, but really if we can make some of those changes, build some of those new habits, that's what's going to lead to the type of growth that Trevor got over the years. So, so Trevor, let's just start with this uh, concept before we dive in here. Um, I know when I started to do consulting, you know, gosh, probably 16 years ago, um, it was about showing other advisors best practices. And I had probably two or three years where I would show people best practices. Some of them got really good results, some got no results. And what I realized is I was trying to help people with their behaviors to get results, but I really wasn't working up here. And that's really where the coaching is, is it's, it's working on your thinking, thinking differently. As Trevor always says, thinking bigger, which influences new behaviors, which influences new results. Once you get the results, it influences your mindset that, hey, I can do this. So Trevor, just talk about that, how powerful was was your mindset and your behaviors in your journey to grow by more than 10 times? Yeah, you know, this is, I used to hear this uh, from, uh, from, from John, actually. For those that don't know, I hired John. He's been my coach for the last 10 years. I hired him in 2009 along with Dynamic Directions, and he used to talk about this. And, uh, of course, back then I was in my uh, mid-20s, and I was, I, I'm, I'm much more mature now, uh, of course, but I used to think, what the heck are you talking about? This is esoterical stuff. Just tell me what to do, right? Uh, but the truth is, is that I was, it, it, when I hired John, I knew I, knew I needed change. We were coming right out of uh, 08, 09. I was stuck. I was surrounded by a group of advisors. Um, I had just gone P2, and they were very, what's a good word here, John? complacent. And so yeah. a, a, a lot of of my growth stems back to having accountability, having uh, this, this mindset, shifting my mindset on what's possible. I find that all the time in talking with advisors is that they're looking to do this, you know, just inch forward. The truth is that you can knock down that door and, and do so much more than you think is possible for for the small practices that are just starting out on the call, and for those that you know are managing a billion or whatever have have a have a team practice. Um, so this is this is a big big deal, and I think a lot of it starts in getting around very successful people, having someone that can help you think differently, get outside your comfort zone, right? You want to get comfortable in being uncomfortable. You hear that phrase a lot, but it's so so true. Um, and then getting around other advisors that D2 works with, that was one of the biggest values, John, for me, was to, to see all these other advisors thinking completely different and then trying to steal everything from them. Absolutely. Yes, it's uh, uh, exactly what we want to facilitate here for all of you at D2 is, is more ideas, great best practices to steal from. And I tell you, this, this webinar format's been great. Uh, it's been great to see the attendance on these. It's so easy to get together, which, you know, will in turn – uh, just show how easy it is to get, you know, clients and prospects to, together on these. And, and I think uh, I, I keep preaching this is one of the greatest opportunities of everyone's career. You know, you look back at uh, downturns that we had. Think about um, early 2000, the tech bubble burst, you know, 9-11 happened. You know, we had a, a sort of recession after that, you know, too. And uh, look, massive growth for Ameriprise Advisors. A lot of you picked up a lot of assets, grew a lot from the uh, financial crisis from late, what, 07 to early 09, massive asset growth. Um, I, I love a quote from one of our uh, uh, CAC advisors put it best. He said, you know what? I got most of my best clients at, during that financial crisis and right after that financial crisis, and uh, they're really great clients today, and, you know, it's a breeze working with them through this thing. So we're there. We are at the stage that the wave is starting to happen. 
And it's not just the dissatisfied client that uh, really have been abandoned by their advisor. It, it's astounding how many people out there just are not hearing from their advisor at all. Pretty much 100% of new clients that I'm hearing advisors have been getting in the last, what, six weeks as all this has started, that has been 100% the message. I'm not even hearing from anybody. You know, you're calling your clients, you, you've got webinars, you're sending me emails, you know, you're obviously on it. My person, who knows what they're doing? So um, that is uh, an incredible opportunity for you there. The other thing too is, is there's some unique opportunities to this that uh, look, there, there could be some rollover opportunities. Um, I'm, I'm hearing from a practice that, that, hey, you know, someone's moving jobs or someone got laid off. Um, you know, it's sad, but it creates an opportunity for you to help them. And these 401k assets that, uh, that need to be managed, gosh, such a big opportunity there. So, so Trevor, what's your perspective on this wave that's just mounting and, and what a big opportunity this could be for everyone? Yeah, well, I mean, we already know the statistic that 10,000 people were retiring daily in the baby, the baby boom generation. Like, that hasn't stopped. In fact, it may have actually sped up the process because we're in a recession, period, no matter how you define it. And there are going to be additional layoffs. Hopefully things get started. Uh, but that's just the truth of the matter. Then you add in all the different things that we're going to talk about as far as people – most of the time need a catalyst to work with an advisor. They're not just randomly going to decide that they uh, all of a sudden need a financial planner. It's, hey, I'm getting close to retirement, there's a severance package, I just got laid off, or like right now, we've seen uh, the quickest correction and volatility maybe ever. Um, so that's number one. Number two, we know where everybody's at, and number number three, um, uh, it's it's this this period of time where people are already starting to think about retirement. So, you know, um, I, I, I I'm, I'm in agreement because because of all those things that converge. This is a, a massive opportunity. In fact, I'm I'm down in Houston. For those that don't know, um, there was an article that came out in the New York Times. I think it was yesterday, um, and so it's going to differ from person to person based on where you're at. But they're projecting something like 200 to 300,000 people are about to get laid off in the energy industry. So that is is obviously not good. But this is this is when we shine, especially Ameriprise, uh, coming at it from a comprehensive, holistic approach to to add uh, advice and value. So if I was in practice, I would be doing all these things times 10 because it's difficult. Uh, to find, you know, a couple of those. We have them all together right now, and that's why we keep putting out all the different things that we're doing to try and think differently to, to gain market share. So I, I think we've got to use this momentum uh, to do something that Trevor was great at to start thinking bigger. And um, uh, I don't know if anyone's watched these um, uh, these ESPN series about the Bulls on, on the last couple Sundays. Um, you know, that's the time I was coming up as a kid playing basketball. It's my favorite store, uh, sport. You know, Michael Jordan, what, a, what an icon of, of an athlete. And uh, I tell you, it was really motivating to see just the, the how quickly he rose from uh, his college years, early professional years to, you know, all the championship years. And um, a, a lot of this is lined up uh, right in, in the heat of a lot of my – um, doctoral studies in performance psychology, uh, what makes the Michael Jordans of the world, the Trevor Shakibas of the world, what makes them uh, uh, better? How do they excel? How do they exceed levels that most others are not able to achieve? And, and one of the things I've uncovered when it comes to goal setting is it's very clear. The highest achievers, they have the loftiest goals. They're putting the bar so high, and I'm going to reach something that there's probably no way I'm going to get, but they go after it. And you know what? They reach it. It's motivating. They work hard to get there. Um, we'll talk about a little bit later about the, uh, the gap in just the goal setting and getting there, but typically if we set an easy goal that, hey, I'm going to bring in, you know, two million bucks in the next quarter, yeah, I think right now you might do that in a, a, a week or two. I think this opportunity is massive where you can be bringing in tens of millions really quickly with this wave that's coming. 
So when it comes to what the annual goals are, um, no one is retreating from their annual goals. It's very clear that the managed account fees that, that everyone has, that's really the lifeblood and the biggest catalyst to your practice, there's been minimal impact. They're not down 30 and 40%. This isn't a, a, a freak out and, and everyone do something different. It's been very minimal. And I hear from everybody that, gosh, uh, we brought in a little bit of assets. We never felt the downturn. In fact, we had some other business going like insurance and, you know, we haven't really felt this too much at all. And, uh, and, and I think that's the uh, positiveness we've got to build from, we've got to grind from. So there's no retreating on, on the business goals. If anything, we will be increasing the business goals because it's such a great opportunity out there and we can be capturing it. So remember that, let's increase the goals, even just looking at the next couple of months to get to mid-year, the 2020 goals where you're going the next three, 10 years, let's really raise the bar here and just remember those that set the bar the highest are the best and greatest achievers. So Trevor, thoughts on that, on just you know, goal setting, setting the bar and really going after it. Yeah, so the way we approach it was always two, two ways. One, we always like to have a goal that we knew we could achieve because I do think it's important to have that baseline and to achieve your goals. Um, but we always like to have a second goal uh, that was a stretch goal, and that's the goal that I would target, talk about, and incentivize all of my team towards. And for all the advisors that have team members and, and staff, uh, remember, everyone's going to follow you. So if, if you're not leading from the front, then no one's going to follow. I mean, right? It makes sense. If you talk about focus and place priority on whatever it is, GDC, net flows, clients acquired, everybody else is, especially if you incentivize it monetarily. I like to do that with client acquisitions, uh, client acquisition and net flows. And look, the other point that needs to be made here is that some advisors are going to be paralyzed. Um, the ones that gain market share are going to be the ones that, you know, adjust um, and evolve quickest. But remember, results always follow activity. It's proven and it's indisputable. Results always follow activity. So if right now, based on what the market's done, you're behind, you've got to, 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 to leverage activity. You've got to increase your activity. And if you do that, I can promise you that results will follow. It may not be next week, but it absolutely, every time I, I double down on activity, results always followed. Absolutely, and uh, uh, with, with Trevor, I tell you, his stretch goal was always, for me, was, was you know, that was his high bar, and that's really all we talked about. I kind of forgot about the, the safe goal with him, and it, and it worked. And um, even with his team, um, I'm, I'm guessing that Dr. Empowers is Drew, same with Drew, man. It's all about uh, plan B goal, that stretch goal is, is the one, because uh, it, it's possible to do. And uh, so, so that, that mindset and, and shift is part of, of this aspect of getting out of our little bubble. The human brain wants to be comfortable. It's the way it's designed. It's sort of a control and protective mechanism for us. Um, we sort of have equilibrium uh, when we're in our comfort zone. Uh, we, when we're stressed or, or, you know, what we've been through in the last six weeks of, oh, my gosh, is this virus, the market's going down, I'm staying in my house. Um, it, it's, it's definitely not our comfort zone we've been thrown into. And our, our brain craves to find that equilibrium. And so uh, when we're in that comfort zone, you know, we feel safe. There's, there's uh, a, a lot of calmness in the mind, and, and we retreat to that. So and fortunately in business, if we stay in that comfort zone, it's like all the advisors Trevor talked about that were in his old office. They were comfortable. They were complacent. And they weren't going outside of there. So if you look at this chart, you know, we got thrown into that fear zone, uh, what, about six weeks ago. Um, I, I never forget when the uh, NBA postponed the rest of the season. I remember Trevor texting me that night. Um, that was sort of the, the, the big signal that, whoa, this is serious. And then from that night through the weekend to Monday, it was the fury of, you know, schools are closed and, and states started to shut down. And so... Um, you know, when we're in that fear zone, we're not at our best. We kind of get thrown into it as we first get out. It, it, it's kind of scary. 
um, as we get further out, which I see a lot of people going through is that kind of learning zone that, okay, we figured out how to deal with this. Um, you know, two or three weeks in, a lot of you, I, I was, I was feeling the pain. You're saying, gosh, you know, I'm really feeling this. It's weighing on me, you know, having extra anxiety. Um, but, uh, but you know, I, I feel like everyone's kind of net learning zone. We're figuring out how to do this, how to work with clients from home, uh, how to work with them virtually. And so we sort of acquired some, some new skills here. But I think what happens is, is we kind of live in that zone there. Um, that, okay, we've been thrown into this and we figure out how to deal with it. It's that next zone, the growth zone, is where we all need to go to. This is where you hit that turbo growth level. This is where it's so out, far outside of the norm and it's such a stretch that this is really where human beings grow. You know, you're not going to grow here. You're, you're kind of forced to grow here a little bit and figure it out, but it's when we get way outside of our bubble, outside of our comfort zone, we really stretch what it's possible for us to do. This is where massive, massive growth happens. So let's look at this and how can we turn that into incredible action in this really interesting window that we have. I think through, you know, May and June, you know, as Trevor said, Texas is open up Friday. You know what, everyone's not gonna jump into sitting side by side at a restaurant. Everyone's not gonna get in a plane and go somewhere. Um, it's still going to take some time until people are comfortable doing all of the things that they used to do. So, look, it's still good for you. It's a good thing because people will probably still be home a little bit more than they were, you know, gosh, uh, pre all this, I guess, uh, early February and, and previous. So, let's get down to what we need to be laser focused on for May and June. Let's get way ahead of pace. By mid-year, let's set up the launch ramp, and then we'll do the same going for the rest of the year. But this is a critical time right here, May and June. Massive growth potential going into the summer, going into mid-year. We can propel that to blow away the goals for the rest of the year. But the time is now. The opportunity is here. The window is here, and it's important to jump on it. So growth, you know, just a reminder, I talk about these often. There's two ways to grow any business do more with existing people, attract new people. And I think if you always have activity in these two areas, you're always gonna be growing. So Trevor, what's your thoughts in the, you know, getting out of the comfort zone, focus on these two growth methods. What should advisors be thinking about and what would you have been thinking about to really maximize results right now? Yeah, well, I mean, I'd go back to my point earlier about activity. Um, there's no better time to get new clients than when you're in a period like this, just based on the fact that uh, obviously they're going to look at you um, as kind of a hero <laughs> because of where the market is and then where it's, you know, the recovery is going to come from. I think that's the biggest opportunity by far. It's just like when you're, you're advising clients about dollar cost averaging, if you look at it the same way with your practice. Um, new flows is always, uh, it's, it's what we used to talk about, John. If you get new clients and new flows, everything else is going to solve itself. So if you're good there, everything else will ultimately follow. And then with existing customers, look, uh, th there's so many different things you can do here um, when it comes to uh, being a different voice, adding value as an advisor. It, it could be things like uh, Roth conversion. How do we reallocate Mr. Client to take advantage of this possible once in a decade opportunity? Um, you know, we, we, the market's already recovered 20% where, from, from where it was. Um, you, you could start to bring, again, it's about adding value, right? Uh, if, if someone's held cash for a while, how do we dollar cost average that in? How do we talk about, um, refinance? I mean, there's, there's a lot of points here that, that could add value. As far as business, um, you know, it's going to be specific to each client, but the first things I would be looking at would probably be insurance. Um, and again, some of that you could position depending on the product. Uh, would it be a good time to lump some uh, funds in or st start that MIUL? So, I mean, this isn't a, a webinar to go deep into to product, uh, but, but that's what I would be looking at. And I think the, the last point I'd make here is that you can't just say, hey, we're going to do more. You've got to quantify and then get into the very minute details of what you're going to achieve 
how you're going to, to, to get that GDC from existing customers, and then what, it, what it's going to take, how many calls, you know, we can talk about that more, but that's what we used to track every Monday, how many dials, how many refer, like, you have to get really, really detailed on what your activity is going to be and then track it and have accountability. So, look, the, the lowest hanging fruit always lies with, with your client. Uh, is the shortest timeline to success there. Their phone call away. And so um, so let, let's talk about that side first, just what's there with existing clients. And look, I would just stack up your, op your, your, your opportunity list, your pipeline with as many of these as, as possible. Every single one of you I've talked to have client assets coming in, all of you. I've yet to talk to advisor that says, no, I don't have anything coming in. Uh, everyone's got, got, got money coming in. And, and looking at firms, and um, I'm pretty sure it was March was a, a, a close to record month for, um, for new assets in for, for Ameriprise. I'm so excited to see where April falls. I mean, things are happening. Things are, are, are moving there. So, so look, that's a very low hanging fruit. What assets are out there to move from clients, whether it's, it's cash at the bank, collecting dust, not earning anything, other accounts should be right for the picking. Um, whether it's, it's retirement assets to, to maybe move around, that's a very low hanging fruit. Look at that one first. See what you can do with your uh, uh, investment side, build up those assets with existing people should be pretty easy. Um, we're seeing more financial planning than ever. I know some of you um, uh, like to increase number of plans to boost payout, or just really believe in it, want to do more with, with clients. Uh, gosh, I, I'm hearing tons of that too. People are very willing to, to do planning right now. Um, they feel the need after going through this and, and want to know that they're going to be okay. And if we go back to value and price, if you help them understand the value of planning and hoping to show that they'll be okay, they're very willing to, to, to pay your fee. So it creates GDC. And look, it leads to all kinds of opportunities. The more planning you do, the more stuff you turn up. You turn up assets uh, to, to be more efficient or effective uh, for you to manage. You find insurance opportunities and, and things to do. I think the interesting aspect on, on what Trevor brought up, um, and this is not an insurance webinar at all, but there's massive opportunity there. And, and I think we got to be thinking of the, um, you know, what, how will the landscape change here with, um, uh, I, I mean, yeah, some people dying from this, it's, it's much more significant than the flu. You know, is that going to change insurance rates, the ability to get insurance? Um, I mean, there's probably going to be some changes coming, and I think that uh, um, I'm hearing from people a little bit more urgency. Maybe those people that were on the fence about doing something, I, I think these are easy tipping points to get them over, to get them into the let's do something now because who knows, rates could go up. It could be harder to get insurance, um, but to get in there now, I think, makes a lot of sense. So stack up your opportunities. There, there are tons of them there. I can guarantee you there's more opportunities than you think there are sitting in your book. And so constantly be hunting, constantly be, be stacking up that pipeline and adding them up. So, so, Trevor, for you, how would you think about that pipeline adding up? How would you organize what's out there for you to go after with clients? Well, I mean, I, I think the first thing is to get organized and leverage, um, you know, home office and, and your team. So I used to always think, like, my time was best used marketing, face-to-face, face -face, virtually, uh, over the phone. Um, but I, and I always looked at everything quarterly, too, from a pipeline perspective. You know, insurance takes a while, and there's all these different things that you got to do. Um, but, you know, it's like I put in the chat box there – one thing that we found here is the efficiency has gone through the roof. It's forced Ameriprise and advisors to get way, way more efficient. Um, you know, typically when you do a conference call or a virtual call, it's going to be significantly shorter than in person. So, uh, and moving money in the processes of electronic signature, et cetera. So, um, I would probably categorize everything and I would say, look, this is what we need to do to get back on track or to really knock our goal out of, out, out of the, uh, out of the park. And it would be net flows, financial planning, uh, p potential insurance opportunities. And then someone else talked about, you know, in-service distributions. That's another huge one. Uh, again, for those that have limited 
choices that may have been on the fence, you can absolutely bring this back up and say, look, you know, we've talked about this before. For whatever reason, we didn't implement. Um, I absolutely would recommend this right now. The market's down. Look at, at how much more we can do here from a diversification standpoint, the choices, and I don't need to go into all that. I, I, I think, like, you could pretty much talk about anything. <laughs> you could almost talk about anything because you have everyone's attention right now. And um, whatever you, whenever you eventually make the ask, which, by the way, you, you still have to do, you've got a great shot of, of uncovering new business and then and finding new clients and assets as well. Awesome, awesome stuff. So let's make that a big focus here. Um, the next one has been a, a, an ultra popular topic here on the uh, latest virtual marketing ideas. Um, let's see, the, the game changed there, you know, getting together, doing all the events that were planned. Uh, they just aren't there. But the wonderful thing is all the touches events that you thought you might do. Hey, you can still do most of them virtually. It's just we got to think differently about it. We have to have different behaviors to get those results that we want. So um, I, I first wanted to start with these uh, cabin fever relievers. Um, uh, Trevor first did a, a video about that, gosh, maybe in a, a, a few weeks now, where he got a special delivery from, from his, his realtor. So Trevor, tell us about how that started, how it made you feel, and, and how advisors can continue to duplicate that. Yeah, so again, this is an idea that I stole from someone that's not even in the industry, and my realtor sent me a just a, a bag. She, she actually dropped it off at my door, um, and it was uh, uh, some, some goodies, and it was really mainly for the kids, for our kids. I, we have a five- and a two-year-old, and it was just so thoughtful, and it was, hey, here's something to relieve the cabin fever, and then it was just brilliant because – you know, my son uh, opened it up with me, and he thought it was the most amazing thing. It probably cost like eight bucks. And in in the note, and I would encourage everyone, if you haven't seen it, to go to Dynamic Direction's YouTube channel. Subscribe there or also sign up for my Marketing Minute video. All of them are, are right there. You can see I actually open it up on video, and I read the note. And the note says something like, hey, this is to help relieve the cabin fever, blah, 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 your value client. And if you do us a favor, take a picture of your kids or you enjoying it or the bag and then put it on Instagram and Facebook and tag us. Brilliant. And I thought, you know what, I'm stealing that. And I did a Absolutely. different variation on my last, last one, which was a kind of a box that you could send branded with your group. Same thing, though. Right, it, you, you can drop it off. You can send a box. You can you can do all sorts of different things, um, and, and leverage social media to say, "Wow, this advisor is different." Like, what are they doing? I haven't heard from my advisor at all. Absolutely, it's it, it's such a a neat touch, and I like what you said. It didn't have to be expensive. It was the thought. It was the wow that was created there. So we're hearing just awesome stories from the advisors that have launched this. Um, uh, gosh, it's been two or three weeks and now there's a, a, a practice in Florida. Um, they uh, launched these out. They started to get some massive social media activity because they prompted the same thing. They gave just some neat little things. None, none of them were very expensive. They did the same note that Trevor's talking about, uh, asking them to post something. And the post caught fire. It was amazing the number of posts that happened. What my favorite part was is that the comments, under the post were the best. And a lot of them are starting to come out as, my advisor doesn't do that. In fact, I haven't heard from them in months. You're gonna see that if you're doing it and people are posting, it is fantastic. And you wanna generate some quick referrals pretty quickly, that one works excellently. So um, that was a great success story. Um, I think also for them, it's gonna be a tipping point for a new seven-figure client. Um, they dropped it to another awesome uh, success story was a, a practice out of Texas that, that's starting to hit some uh, turbo growth mode. Um, they started to do these same thing. Somebody that commented and saw it got connected, and it turns out that they're going to be a pretty big whale client for this advisor. And uh, it, it's really working. It's just it's doing these things that Trevor said. It's the increased activities, more activities than you've ever done before. And think about it like this. Instead of taking, you know, a bunch of clients out to a dinner and some guests, you know what, those bills add up quite a bit. 
uh, especially adding on tax, tip, I mean, it's quite a lot. You could probably spend half of that and wow a lot of people with something like this. You know, you could ship them a little branded box or you could just, you know, drop some at their house or if someone help you, you know, drop something at their house, you could, you know, leave it on their porch even uh, for social distancing and, and not even see them. But um, uh, gosh, that is, is definitely working. So, so consider those. We're seeing big response from them. We're also seeing the wave of uh, virtual events are really catching on and there's just such great best practices. You know, we, we've been featuring them in the, um, uh, the D2 wide webinars uh, that, that we have weekly as well and uh, uh, all kinds of different versions. So, you know, last week we did a, um, a, a wine tasting version of this and, and really just talked about how you could do kind of a casual uh, uh, virtual happy hour kind of format, just get together and um, ask questions and, and talk or you could get into, hey, let's taste these specific things, or you could get into, hey, let's drop uh, uh, bottles of people's houses of what we're gonna try, let's try it together, get down to what we they, they like. Um, next week, uh, is it next week? Um, yes, next week we're gonna be doing a, a bourbon tasting with, with D2. So um, uh, I'm gonna uh, funnel everyone to that. I'm gonna take a break from these separate webinars. We're gonna drive everyone into the D2Y webinars at uh, uh, five central, six Eastern time. Uh, we, we've got a, a, a bourbon expert out of Kentucky. He's gonna host this tasting. It's pretty cool. And again, it's just a format that you could copy with others. I'm seeing a lot of cooking classes fly all, all around. Uh, again, not too hard to put on. A lot of people are available uh, to put them on. I think it's really neat. I think a neat level of this is if you're into cooking or something that you might be into um, that you can put on and that you can host and, and bring people to. I think it's in two weeks. Um, I've got a, a, a really a, a grilling class plan for, for all of you. Uh, again, it's gonna be at the D2 wide webinar. Um, it's hard to duplicate that one twice, but uh, uh, whatever it is that you might be into that you may have done with clients, it is so possible to do virtually and uh, we're seeing games come about. Um, I, I'm getting invited to uh, some neat things that a lot of you are doing. So all of it's possible, but Trevor, give us your insights on that. I mean, this, this mental shift in doing things in person, the possibility of doing it virtually, um, give us just your thoughts and insights on that shift and, and what everyone should be doing in this, uh, uh, this current environment. Well, I think the, the thing to remember is people are looking, at least for the next couple of weeks, maybe longer, people are looking for distractions. They're looking for something to do. Um, you know, last week John brought a sommelier on, and the guy talked about wine, and I thought it was great. And so my wife and I participated and, you know, uh, had a lot of fun. Uh, the other thing that I, that I would mention is, like, it, it, it doesn't have to be expensive, Moreover, it's going to be a lot cheaper than a typical event where if you did a bourbon tasting at a restaurant, it might cost you three, four, five grand. You could, you could just do a happy hour, the first bullet point there, and it will literally cost you nothing. I've, I've seen some of my former clients that, that are retired in the hill country out here in Texas, their neighborhood has a happy hour every day, it seems like, and they're taking pictures of uh, the Zoom deal uh, and posting it on Facebook. But, and, and it could be fun, meaning, hey, bring your favorite drink, and some people are bringing, you know, Bud Light, and some people are putting together some expensive um, cocktail or, or, uh, or, or bourbon or something. That would cost nothing. If you want, you could send a bottle of wine to five clients, and you could say, hey, bring, uh, bring a, a friend, um, and, and then finally, the, I think the, the key here, John, is leverage social media. Leverage social mm -hmm. media. I, I just took a picture of this, so if you want to connect with me on my personal Facebook page or LinkedIn, probably LinkedIn um, or both, you're going to see the picture I just took and say, hey, it was great talking with advisors and thinking outside the box while trying to get uncomfortable. And then have them tag you, and you can answer those two questions I'm always talking about. Uh, you know, how many people know what you do, and are you expanding that number every day? It just logically makes sense that right now you've got 200 people that think of you when it comes to financial planning and, and investments. How many more clients and assets would you get if it was 2,000 and just the things that occur in life with severance packages, deaths, et cetera? 
Um, I, I, I just think it's because of the cost and the fact that people want a distraction and you have everyone in kind of one place, I don't know that we'll see the, the combination of those factors ever again. Agreed. I, 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 uh, I, I agree. I mean, the fact that people ran is, 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 is unprecedented. So, so one thing to keep in mind is that virtual activities will create, you, you need some more volume than you would for an in-person activity. Uh, is has been our learning over the years. So um, just expect to do more, uh, which is okay. I, I would look at how can you quadruple your activity. If you were doing an event once a month for clients, do it every week. And how can you um, uh, increase maximum activity now and then some? I think and then some should be the, the culture right now for May and June. How many uh, opportunities can you stack up with clients and then some. How many of these activities can you do to get access to new people? And then some. It's the extras that the really high achievers uh, are really set out to do. Um, I remember last Sunday, um, Michael Jordan, when um, they lost again to the Pistons, I uh, realized he was physically outmatched and getting uh, really beaten on the court uh, by these guys and bulked up, put in 15 pounds of muscle in the off season. And I remember the quick interview with the trainer. He said, gosh, you know, we, I'd say, hey, let's do six sets of this. Michael would do 12. He always did, and then some. Um, that really pushed him to excellence. So same for you. There's no limit to what you can do. Ameriprise isn't saying, hey, you have to stop with this many events. You can do three events a day, literally, and really max this out. So remember that. Also remember, too, that, look, when it comes to growth, the things that have gotten you to this point, it's going to be different things that get you to the next point. It's relevant now more than ever in this unique environment that we're in, but it's going to be really important to, to come out of this with the afterburners, with massive growth. We've got to do things differently. We've got to think differently up here. We need to have some different behaviors, some different results. So um, uh, I, I want to hear what new things you're going to do differently here um, so email me what is it you're going to implement, as we talked about before, in these who's going to help you, when the heck are you going to do it. This kind of uh, very specific plans lead to big results. And let's just think short term for now, since the opportunity is so crisp, it's right here. What's the specific plan for May and June? What is it that you're trying to achieve? What are you going to do by when? Who's going to help you do it? Um, let's think about that uh, sort of launching short-term goals here that we can really reach for and really get some, uh, some big results in. And um, when it comes to changing behaviors, again, one of the hardest things that we do as human beings. So um, you, you can go back and watch this replay. I'm going to email everyone this, this, this deck here so you can be reminded of these things. But there's four things you can do when it comes to your behaviors. There's some things you can stop doing. There's some things you can start doing. There's some things you can decrease and some things you can increase. So an example could be um, I'm going to stop eating carryout. Uh, I'm going to start getting up earlier. I'm going to decrease my food intake and I'm going to increase my exercise if my goal was to lose weight. So those behavior changes are tough because with increased workout, our body's sore and the next day we have to get up early. Our brain says, no, we're not doing this. We're sore. Uh, hit the snooze button, get the covers on, lay back in bed. That's what our brain tells us. But we've got to find a way to change. And in the short term, it's so tough. Initially, these new behaviors are the toughest, and you've got to find a way to push through. Now, eventually, it'll be regular. It'll be uh, uh, your status quo, the new norm, once you break through for a few weeks of pushing yourself beyond your limits, being outside of your comfort zone for that long. That'll become your new comfort zone. And then once we work really well in there, once we start to get comfortable, then we've got to break out again. But these things are where the rubber hits the road. It's your behaviors. It's working on those changes. It's finding what is it that you're going to stop, that you're going to start, you're going to do less of, you're going to do more of. 
that is absolutely what's going to change. So, so Trevor um, uh, was always open to be uncomfortable, always change, which is a big part of his success. So, Trevor, what's your thoughts there? What, what advice would you have for everyone on going through that behavior change and just how to persevere through it? Yeah, I mean, look, in the beginning, when I started working with you, it was, it took me a long time. John probably remember this. He would, you know, try to get me to come to a different conclusion. And then, you know, three weeks later, I could finally do something different. The sooner you can make that change and implement, the better. And so the advisors that get the biggest results, it's not that they're, you know, unbelievably smart or anything like that. They just take the biggest they, – they, they take massive action, they consistently do it, and then they pivot faster than anyone else. So those, those practices that John was talking about that are seeing – uh, massive inflows that will probably end this year at 30 or 40 or, or maybe some 50 million in flows, they probably took a few hours after they fully realized what was going to happen with the, this whole coronavirus and the fact that, you know, the, the market and the economy and the shutdown, but then they immediately pivoted, right? Um, so th th that's kind of what I would, I would say. Um, I think uh, the other important thing here for those on the call that don't have a plan or some type of accountability is that was the big change for me. Um, if you just if you're just left to your own devices, you're more than likely not going to achieve the success that you could have. You've got to get uncomfortable, and you've got to have a plan, and you've got to have accountability. Especially as the advisor, the the franchise owner, your team will follow you. If you place priority on this pivot, on marketing, on achieving these results, everybody else will follow. So those were the things that I learned, some, some of them the hard way, and, some, you know, some of it, it took me a while to, to finally figure out, right? And we don't like, as human beings, to be uncomfortable. We like complacency, right? We like warmth. Uh, but when it comes to this, the sooner you get uncomfortable and the more you do it, the bigger results you're going to see. Big time. So um, Trevor mentioned his, his, his marketing minute videos. Um, uh, just shoot him an email. There, there's great stuff flying out every week. It's just a minute. It's a minute. Um, it, it's really great stuff. I, I recommend doing it. Um, I'm pretty sure all of you have my book. If you don't, um, just email me. Um, we'll have Megan get them out. Listen, I would rather this helps you attract clients instead of attracting dust at my place or at our D2 headquarters. So we will send them to you. We'll send them to you for free. Just send me the email. If, uh, if you have a new team member or you want others on your team to get these, we, we're very happy to, to send them out to you. Uh, just shoot me an email. We'll get them right out. And uh, for anyone that um, uh, I, I'm not working with that, that isn't on our calendar, um, right now in this limited window of time, I don't have the travel that I normally have. I was supposed to be in Florida this week, Texas next week, uh, D.C. the week after. Uh, this is like conference busy season for me, and so I've got time. I'm not getting on a plane going somewhere. So we're offering a free consultation, a free coaching session uh, for any of you that I'm um, uh, not working with yet. We're happy to do that. But uh, uh, listen, it's a tremendous opportunity now. Uh, think bigger than ever. Stretch the bar higher than you ever have. Really go after these goals and just break through that, that discomfort of, of change, break through those behavior changes. And uh, look, it might be a few weeks, but if you can get that pipeline constantly stacked, reaching out, doing, and then some with clients, more activity than you've ever done before, and then some with your activity level, uh, I'm telling you, it's going to lead to big, massive, massive results here. So thanks for everyone to tune in. We'll send out the replay. Please email me what your action items are going to be. Looking forward to hearing them and looking forward to hearing you get big results. We're going to grow more than ever this year, and it's going to be awesome. Everyone stay awesome out there. Stay bullish. We'll see you in the next coaching session. Thanks, Trevor. Okay, bye-bye. Connect with us uh, on YouTube, Dynamic Directions, YouTube. Subscribe.